Okay, p Yeah, it works. But don't worry, I've muted most of them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Not Enough Sec. This is Google Home. You probably have one of those devices at home, otherwise you wouldn't watch this video. And definitely you're gonna have a Google Assistant on your Android phone. So if you want to know how to integrate Google devices with Node-RED and take advantage of this, well, this is video about Nora. And as much as easy Nora is, and, uh, well, I'm using it, I'm going to try to put your first because there is one elephant in a room that we have to address. Now, Gbridge shut down about a month ago. Whether it was because development was taking too much time or there was not enough users to support its life, I'm not 100% sure, but it was a third-party service that once shut down, well, you've ended up with broken integrations. And Nora is a very similar service, which means there is a risk of this entire endeavor going nowhere. But, on the plus side, Nora is extremely easy to work with. All you have to do is just register an account, get an IP, and within seconds, you'll have devices working with your Google Assistant, which, in my opinion, makes it worthwhile. In this article, there, I've talked about four different ways you could integrate Google Assistant into Node-RED. Some of them were very complicated and some of them were easy. We are here to talk about Nora, which is the, by far the easiest way to bring your devices into Google Home ecosystem. Yes, guys, that means that willingly I'm going to take a risk and integrate Nora into my home ecosystem knowing that Nora may shut down as well. But Nora has one more thing going for it. It's incredibly easy to integrate and use in Node-RED, and I'll show you how. To get started with Nora, you have to register an account on this website. So go ahead and you're going to be given a key to register your Nora account. Once you've got that, then you have to go to Palette Manager, to Install tab, and just search for Nora to install it and add the nodes to your Node-RED setup. Now, that's not all the work that needs to be done. You have to go to your Google Home app, add a new device, and then select works with uh, Google and search for account with Nora. So once you've got that added and registered, you are ready to start interacting with it. Let's talk about what things I have in common. So this is a one of the um, nodes, and you obviously have to configure it and enter that API key in here. And then uh, most of the devices that you're going to add, they're going to have the names in here. That name is the name that's going to be displayed in your Google Home app. So you can see the test outlet and test outlet in my Google Home app being here. Now, if you add the bedroom hint, which is basically a name of the bedroom where the device has should be placed, it will add that device to that uh, room automatically. Now, for most of the uh, uh, nodes also, you can decide what kind of payload is going to be submitted when you activate this. So in this case, it's a switch, so we have a very simple option, either switch is on or off, and that's the payload I selected in here. Lastly, for most of them, you also want to activate if message arrived on input, pass through output, because if you update something from Node-RED, you want to update your Google server and still pass that information over to activate and command in node red. So that's how you set up most of the nodes. Now let's take a look at the individuals. So we're going to start with this one. This is a test outlet that you can probably use with uh, smart plugs or smart sockets. Nothing stops you from linking this to lights if you want, but uh, this is the icon you're going to get on your uh, Google Home interface. Now this interface comes with a widget, so you can control it not only with the voice commands, but you can control it with this interface. And as you can see, as soon as you click on it, it will produce the agreed payload. Now there's something to bear in mind. Now to submit the information, I have to submit a message payload in, um, in this case, true or false. So when I'm going to submit false, it will turn the outlet off 
it will supply that information over to Google, but the widget won't update until you exit it. So when you when I exit the widget and enter the widget again, you'll see that will uh, display correct status. Now that works for all of the widgets in Google Home, unfortunately with Nora. So there is no live preview of what is the information about your outlet lights. Now, looking at all the nodes, you have four different roads, nodes that actually works in a very similar way. So you've got your test switch, you've got garage door, and you've got a lock. Now, test switch has a different icon. Other than that, it works in the same way. You can activate the switch and uh, it has the same problems when you deactivate the switch while having gadget open, then it's not going to update it until you exit it out. Now garage, even though it's exactly the same in constructions, has a different icon. Obviously this has a garage door icon, but it doesn't have the controls from the widget. So you cannot control the gadget in other way than with a voice command. Same goes for a smart lock. Smart lock has just this widget. It won't show you whether the lock is jammed or open or left unlock. Uh, you can't uh, interact with it with other ways than a voice activation. And uh, if you want to supply information that the uh, lock is jammed, you use the jammed topic and then you set your payload to true or false. So if you want to jam the lock, you can do it that way. If you want to unjam it, you do it this way. And now I've talked, I've used ex exact this setup for my smart door. So if you're interested in how to get uh, notifications when you forget to lock your door, even though you don't have a smart lock, take a look at this. Okay, so we talked about the easy way uh, of controlling a couple of uh, different uh, nodes. So let's talk about more sophisticated controls and they are here. So let's start with test blinds. Blinds, uh, curtains can be also controlled via this node. And um, there isn't much to really set up in here other than you can decide whether you want an inver invert value or not for your open and closed states. Uh, but I have curtains, I have uh, semi-smart motorized curtains and I've used that to control them. Now, the way you do it, you supply the percentage value. So this is your JSON, this is how it looks like open percent and then value as a number. Zero being the curtains are fully open, 100% means curtains are fully closed. Now this is the interface in Google Home and unfortunately it doesn't come with a widget, so you are limited to voice controls only. Test lights, uh, that's for all your smart lights. So if you have a smart light, then you can use them uh, in such way. You can control the brightness, you can control uh, on and off state, and you can control the color. Now, the way you set up the light, you go to a te test light node and you select the information you want uh, to control. So if you have a brightness controls, you select this. If you got RGB controls, you use this. And if you want uh, the brightness of color changes to trigger the light, you select that checkbox in here. Now, the payload that it's going to be supplied to you, it looks like this. So it's going to have information about online status and its uh, state, whether it's on or off, and the brightness level and the color information as a HSV value. So hue, saturation and value. Hue goes from 0 to 360, saturation from 0 to 1 and value from 0 to 1 as well. You don't have to submit the entire payload. You can submit just a part of it. So you can have, this, uh, have a look at the example in here. If I wanted to turn the light off, all I want, all I need to submit is just as JSON like that. But if I want to have a control over all the values, the JSON would, would look like something like this. Now let's talk about the thermostat. Now I've uh, used this in my project for a uh, smart thermostat in here and you can use the thermostat with uh, values uh, with either thermostat from Google uh, Home or you can use the uh, voice commands as well to control it and it costs you only like five dollars to implement into your old heating system. So take a look at uh, this write-up if you want but to control it with Nora you have to open the thermostat first and let's talk about a couple of things. First it's the temperature unit. The unit operates in Celsius but it can display the data in Fahrenheit. Even though you have the data displayed in Fahrenheit on your um, Google widget, it will still accept the values only in Celsius and submit the values back to node red in Celsius. So bear that in mind. You have supported modes because uh, the, this uh, thermostat in Google takes values from humidity and temperature as well. So you have you know, different modes for different things. 
Now I don't have available modes for fan only purifier, uh, but I have all the modes uh, that are available to me. And if you take a look at the list of modes, this is the list of modes I have available. And I can quickly talk you through it. Heat is for heating system. So if you have a heating system and you want to heat your house, that's what you would use. Cool is for uh, your cooling system. So for your uh, air conditioner, heat cool is for both. So you could use like a, you could keep the range of the temperatures. So if you want your temperature to be between 20 and 30 degrees, uh, then uh, the heating won't kick off unless it's colder than 20 and the aircon won't kick off until it's hotter than 30. And lastly, there is a um, eco mode, which is just a self balancing that Google manages. And that's pretty much it. It's used mostly for being away. Now on the screen also, we have a, a buffer range in Celsius degrees, and that helps with hy uh, hysteresis. So your thermostat won't go crazy and won't disable and enable um, heating or cooling at the edge values. Now, in order to get this information, so let's uh, get into a heat state, for example, and let's uh, set a heating status to something. So I'm going to set it to like 17 degrees. As you can see, this is the payload you're going to receive. It has an operational mode. It has a set point. So that's 17 degrees I've just set. And the set point lower than high, those were the, for the um, AC or HVAC, HVAC controls units. And there is a humidity that was stored on the server. Now, to supply the information from um, your sensors into the thermostat, you are using JSON as well. So this is your uh, how the JSON should be formatted. And there is the one thing to bear in mind. Now, right now, the thermostat is in a heat mode. It's 17 degrees. So let's submit that information over and you'll see what happens. So I've just pushed the information in. And uh, I'm just going to exit out, ex enter the thermostat, and you can see the thermostat is set to off. Why? Because I didn't supply the mode. You need to supply the mode when you send the sensor data to make sure that the same mode will stay um, present. Otherwise, it will just disable the thermostat. So this is the complete payload that you, you can supply as well. That's going to contain the temperature, humidity, mode, set point, set point low and high. So that's how you would interact with a device like a thermostat. There's a couple of all the options I think I should mention. Uh, sorry, that's the test speaker. Is um, indicates that the device operates using one-way and two-way communication. You want probably two-way communication for that. And if you just want a query on the execution, uh, you can select this as well. But obviously, you want to control it rather than query it. OK, we're moving on. We have a test speaker and this is not to control the Google speakers. It's to control Wi-Fi speakers and on your um, widget app, it looks like this. And unfortunately, it doesn't have any fancy controls, so it works only via voice and you are able to sub submit volume controls, which is a payload like this. Or you can submit uh, on off controls, which is a payload like this. So you can combine them together in a single payload. And uh, that way you can just issue a voice command and change the volume of, the, of your uh, connected device linked up to a node red. Lastly, we have a scene and scene doesn't come with actual widget. There is no scene widget in here. So you can name a scene to anything you want. In this case, I have a test scene and you can activate or deactivate depending whether the scene is reversible or not with a voice command. So let's give it a go. Activate test scene. And it will issue the payload uh, of your choice. And that's pretty much everything you needed to know about Nora and how to use it. I know what some of you are going to say. If that doesn't last, what's the point of integrating it? Well, I'm giving it a shot because it's quite easy to do it. And why not? It's there and I want to use it. Second of all, if you don't give it a shot, it'll, it'll never last. And the same goes for any other third party systems. They can simply shut down no matter how big they are. So for now, I'm going to stick to, uh, with Nora and I'll let you know if there are any major changes. All right, guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so there is an array of social media listed there for you to pick and follow me on so you could get instant notifications. 10,000 different YouTube uh, YouTubers, so YouTube people, already taught you how YouTube works, so I don't have to. So I'm just going to say thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. And today we're going to learn how to integrate a this, a Google Assistant, whether it's coming. Yeah, didn't say Google. I'm gonna mute you later. 
I'll be sorted.